Hey, this is Aaron with Faith to Walk Ministries here with another Bible review. Trinitarian Bible Society sent me a review copy of the large print Westminster Reference Bible. Excited about reviewing this Bible. Um, I'm going to just kind of show you the box and let you pause if you need to pause it. There's a large print, 11.8 point, 200,000 references. Nice. Marie Vick catskin leather. I'll show you the back of the box. Add some information there if you want to pause it. I'll go over all that. Some information back there if you want to pause it. There you go. And ISBN number if you need it. There you go. So open the box. Right off the bat, I'm going to let you know that you will smell the leather. This is Marivia calfskin. Um, so it has that Marivia calfskin leather. And it has a good leather smell. Right out of the gate, you're going to notice some <clears throat> things about the Bible. It is a thick leather. That's what I like about it. It does not have art gilding, but it does have gilted edges. They do a good job on that. On the outside, no uh, raised or uh, hubs or ribs, but it does have uh, tool ribs. I'm hoping that's fireworks outside. Yes, yeah, fireworks. Holy Bible, large print Westminster reference Bible, TBS. My dog's coming in because he hates fireworks. All right, it's okay, Charlie. Um, so this has, uh, once again, a nice thick leather. It's not like a goat skin where it's really, you know, supple and floppy. But you know what's interesting? This is, this is a large Bible. This is a large one. And what's nice about it, if I open this Bible up and lift it up, some, some Bibles decide to be so floppy, you would not be able to read the pages. But this one's not. One hand. And I could pretty well read the whole Bible. So that's really nice. I'm going to show you something else that's, that's really cool. Because even though this is not an edge line Bible, it is my own. And because of that, look at this. I'm just going to open this a few pages. We're not even to Genesis. Look at this. It's open right up. Genesis chapter 1. Right out of the box. That is very nice. Um, it does, once again, it's not edge lined. It's a paste down liner. They don't have any, um, what they call stress blocks here. The regular size does have like a, like a tab extra. So it come, it moves the stress point from the corner up the page a little bit. Uh, this one does not have that, but it's printed differently. The other one is printed by, in the Netherlands, by Youngblood Printed and Bounded. This one is by Print Corp. So it's different. Um, and I do believe it's because, uh, of the size of it. But it is paste down, vinyl liner, but done very well, glued very well. Folds are very tight. Folds are very tight. And so that is very nice. Okay, you know it's Smythe-sewn. You can see the stitching right there. So that's gonna help lay flat and give it longevity. It has some blank pages here in the front. Then you have a presentation page, which makes it nice. All right. A couple other blank pages. You can write stuff if you like. The beginning page there. All right. That's right there where it shows it's printed abound in Belarus by Print Corp. Some of the things it has, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna go through every page. So I said, there's a lot of reviews out there, but I just want to give you my opinion. So I'm going to do some comparisons also of some of the other Bibles that I use. It does have uh, the Epistle Dedicatory. Now this one, because of the large print, they did a couple, leave out a couple things. Um, they don't have the translators to the reader. It goes right into various helpful characteristics, the authorized version, the use of italic type. Lord versus Lord Capital, God versus God Capital, use of capitalizations. 
Very good information. If you've never had a King James Bible, this is one to get because it goes into the particulars of the authorized version. Use of Old Testament names in the New Testament, thou and ye. What's the difference? Why? The pilcrow or paragraph marks. Guide to using the large print Westminster Bible, book titles, uh, chapter summaries. We're going to get in those. Uh, Psalm headings, subscriptions to the epistles, references and margins. So it goes into what they use, what they don't use, further content in the margins. Let you know a couple things. It's, it's just a lot of good information. And I love this, how it shows you kind of what's, you know, the running uh, page head, the chapter summaries, the subscript letters, the super, uh, superscript letters, superscript numbers. It tells you how to use it, the asterisks, what they're for, subscriptions, set, section markers as well. So a lot of good information. Some of these we're gonna, I'm going to point out as I look at the Bible. List of books and their abbreviations, names and order of the books in the New Testament. Also has the breakdown of the chapters of each book. That's kind of neat. All right, so then we get into Genesis. I can't believe how it's just laying flat right out of the box. That's very nice. As you know, it does have four ribbons. In the Old Testament, it looks like there's two black. New Testament, two red. I'll probably tuck them in, use my own ribbons. But if you don't want to, these are good. I mean, they're thin. They're not like, let's see here. They're not like fancy ones, but hey, they will work. And it's a Bible with four more ribbons. You don't get that. Um, here's what's cool about it. If you, like I said, if you're familiar with the Thompson chain, you will be feel right at home in this Bible. See, let me just... Throw up a Thompson chain. There's a Thompson chain. So it's a two column text. So it's four columns per page. I like this. You have two column text. You have uh, the references in both columns. So this on the left side, the right side is for the right column. You do have chapter summaries that are marked out by, ver the, by the number of the verse. So verse one, the creation of heaven and earth. Verse three of the light. Verse six starts of the firmament. So you have a chapter summary. You do have, what's nice about it is, once there's 200,000 references. So like in the beginning, God. So right over here, Psalm 33, 6, 9, 136, 5. So it has all of those. And B, so it's right next to the verse. I will let you know, once again, the size of this Bible and, and the print uh size. The print size is 11.8, which is very nice. The size of the Bible that's at outside dimensions is uh, 10 and three quarters of an inch long. It is 7.8 eighth of an inch wide, and it's about one and a half inches thick. So it's really not thick to be a large print Bible. So that's kind of nice. I'll let you also know the couple pages uh, they do have verses marked. Psalm 119, 18. Psalm 19, 7 through 11. I believe 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All right. So going back, just let you look at the size. Actually, it is, my phone is about a foot away. So the print very nice. I'm not sure exactly how the size. I'm thinking this is a seven, probably a seven, maybe eight, more like seven, I think. So it's it's just really nice. And the Old Testament, like I said, they have summer uh, ch a chapter summaries. Nice to know. Um, give it a good information. It has top of the page headings as well. That's very nice. The, this is um, black text only. You know, I think uh, you know, they believe the whole Bible is the Word of God. And we still believe that, of course, if it's black and red text. But some people love that black text. And one thing about black text is a lot of Bibles, except for probably Cambridge. I know uh, Church Bible publishers do really well. The red ink goes dark to light, dark to light. Cambridge does not. It's pretty well consistent, especially in a turquoise. 
Uh, Church Bible Publishers do a good job at that as well. But look how, like, like this is a Thompson. Here's the black letter. Look at how light that is. I mean, I mean, truthfully, one of the reasons I have had to steer a little bit away from the Thompson is this. Do you, do you see what I mean? Look at that. The bleed through. And this is from Kirk Bryden. That is poor. That is, that is just very poor. That, and so uh, a lot of Bibles, they want to go with all black text and they avoid having that issue altogether. Although, also it is line matched. See that? It's line matched. So any believe there's going to be lessened because of that. So let's look at some of the, the things um, in the margins so you understand what's going on here. So once again, if you have a letter in the verse, letters are going to correspond to different references. Now these references, I will let you know, they come from mostly the self-interpreting Bible completed by John Brown, first published in 1778, and other references are from the Cambridge Concord Bible. The chapter summaries um, from the standard edition of the authorized version printed in 1773. Uh, probably pronounced the word their names wrong, but it's E Y R E Er and Strahan in London. So that's where the summaries come from. So you have no, it's a 200,000 of these references. Now, if the reference, let's just keep going. Yeah, here's one. So here you have um, archaic words or old English words that have a more modern, so a command and, and commanded them that they, they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only. So you got that little asterisk, uh, staff only. Let me see here, save a staff only. Script is the bag. Let's see. If you have one asterisk, I usually have another one. Yeah, here it is. And that, that is one. If they have that, that word multiple times in a, in a column, they won't show that asterisk, the word next to each one. They'll do it once per page. So like up here, here it is, save, accept. So once again, that verse is down here. So they're not going to put it in because they did it once up here. So accept a step only, no script, bag, no bread, no money in their, in their purse. So you, you see what exactly it's talking about. If there is, trying to find one, there's another damsel, young woman, girl. If you have a number in the passage, the number is going to actually bring you to uh, the King James Transletter later notes um, that is on there. Also, there's they come from the uh, TBS Expanded Bible Word List. But here's another one I want to let you see here, verse 37. You see this one, 200 penny. So penny takes you to appendix one. So we're going to see that in the back of the Bible too. We come to measurements, charts, weights, things like that. So, once again, it's four column. It is easy to read. It's a cream light -like color, a little bit wider than the regular, the regular size. But still, there's no glare on this. And this is very bright lights above me. I'm trying to find a more uh, translator to the readers. I know I can find one. I mean, they're all through the Bible. I'm just right here in Genesis. one. All right. There we go. So right here you have one. And God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Hebrew, between the light and between the darkness. Number two in the evening and the day and morning were the first day, verse five. Hebrew in the evening was and the morning was. So you have 
exactly what that's talking about right there. Very, like I said, very nicely put together Bible. We're already in 15 minutes. Lace just flat as can be. Go and get to the back. I love that they show, you know, the chapters that's on. Easy to find at the top of the page. I have a lot of good summaries in this. This is the Ephesians. Look at all these references. Man, that's cramped back. A lot of plate. You can write. I'm sure you can write in this Bible. I don't know the GSM paper on it. I wish I would have found that before the video. All right. Back you have Appendix 1, which again, tables of weights and measures used in the Holy Scriptures. Also gives the imperial, which is what we use here in the United States, metric, most of the world. Old Testament length, Old Testament liquid measures, dry measures, money, Old Testament time. So it goes into a lot of good information. I'm not going to go into all that. Appendix 2, a list of words and proper names with their pro their pronunciation. So there's a pronunciation guide. Instead of this being in the text, they made it cleaner, cleaner so you can see how it's pronounced in the back. A few pages of that. Because, once again, they wanted to keep this Bible to a, a good thinness. There's no concordance. That's the only thing I love, a Bible with a concordance. I'm going to tell you why. Because when I'm witnessing somebody asks a question, a verse I don't have memorized or written maybe in the back of the Bible, it's good to have that concordance with you. I know we have phones and all, but you know I'm one that loves to add in the Bible. It's the only thing, only thing I would love for this Bible to still have. To me, that would have made it complete. Um, it would be a great, because when you have a reference Bible, you know, reference a concordance just would go with it. Um, if you had a concordance on this, because there's sometimes if I'm witnessing or something like that and I think of something, I can just turn back and look at that. So I would love to have seen a concordance in there. Has a daily reading plan. So it's a two-year reading plan. I'm going to tell you what. And in this two-year reading plan, you'll read through the whole body Bible once in two years. The Psalms and the New Testament, you'll read twice in those two years. Very nice. So you have uh, quite a few pages of the daily reading plan. You have some Bible paper for notes. And you have their specially made maps. Very colorful. Time of the Patriarchs. The Exodus. Twelve tribes of Israel. Very colorful. And they are, they are not shiny paper. Not even semi. They are matte. Undivided kingdom, but they're cardstock. Kingdoms of Israel and Judah, Persian Empire, the Holy Land in time of Christ. And the one a lot of people love to see is Paul's missionary journeys with the storm that hits someone on the ship. So that's, that's interesting. Remember, they got shipwrecked at Malta. Very interesting. Um, got, you know, just kind of one card stuck in the back. It's a part of that. So you can write something there, too, if you need. But very nice Bible. Now, I know we're 18 minutes, but hey, we're Bible geeks. Let's look. So let me open this back up. So what I want to do is just kind of show you some comparison print. Because, you know, when I was trying to look at some of these, I you know, I didn't know you know, what to do because I, I didn't have uh, the print to back it up with. So let's look at one of the first ones that we're going to see. We're going to show you how it compares to the standard print, or the standard size Thompson, which is 8.5. There we go. You got the references there, so I can't put the verse back to back. 8.5 compared to the 11.8. That's totally, I, I tell you what, if you're having a hard time reading this one, the large print Westminster is superb. But hey, how does it stack up to the large print Thompson? That's what a lot of people want to compare it to. Now, I do have the hardbound. Let's just take a look here. The uh, large print, large print Thompson 
is a 9 point. Because that's what's interesting because the regular size Westminster is a 9.6. So the regular size Westminster already has larger print than the large print Thompson. So this is the large print Thompson next to the large print Westminster. Well, that's a big difference. And a lot of people will say, well, because you have some more pages closer to the camera. Well, let's just take the Thompson. Let's just take less pages. So now we got almost page, just one page on top of one page. Pause that for you. Large print Thompson on the right, large print Westminster on the left. The spacing is better. The Christmas is better. The paper is better. The line matching is better. Now, uh, given we don't have all the stuff in the back that the Thompson has, it's not a chain. This is comparing the print. So let's look at a couple more. Now, when it comes to large print, well, let me compare it to something else a lot of people love to compare things to, which would be the Cambridge Concord. which is an 8, 9 point font. Just so you can see. Concords, where they stand out is the print is so bold and the paper is so amazing. Concords, very readable, even compared to the large print Westminster, but I still love the spacing. Don't get me wrong, I still love my Concord. But I love the spacing. I love that spacing, that Christmas cleanness. And let's compare it to two more. Now, this is the Church Bible Publishers. I do love, I do have the Cambridge turquoise, but let's get compare it here to the turquoise. This is not a large print turquoise, it's just the turquoise. I, my, my favorite is the turquoise, but, and of course the Cambridge turquoise, you're not going to have this go scene, it, barely, barely at all. Le, you know, I mean, I love the boldness of the turquoise. This is pretty well my daily use Bible. But... I love the cleanness. Now, one thing I have to say about the turquoise, though, according to this. So you got the, the size, about the same. This is, uh, I think, 11. This is 11.8. You do have 80, probably about 80-something thousand references with the turquoise. as opposed to 200,000 with the Westminster. So this knocks it out. But for a carry Bible, let's let you see this. See what I'm talking about? With that large print, this footprint is still smaller, but this is a great reference Bible. I'm gonna uh, show you one more. This is one that just came out not too long ago. This is the Thomas Nelson. I've been using it a lot too. Uh, Thomas Nelson. This is the premier collection, King James Version, giant print reference. Very nice and clean. I want to see the... Oh, try and do this one hand. There we go. Now you got the comparison between the giant print, Thomas Nelson. And the large print, Westminster. Hmm. And this one, of course, is going to be the footprint you can see. It's so much smaller. So much smaller. But 200,000 references. Of course, this is probably about 82. So, my thoughts. It's a Bible that I probably would not carry around because it is large. Is it a Bible that I would love to have on my desk for references and to study? And because, once again... The best, the best commentary for scripture 
is other scripture. And I looked, and I tell you what I love about these chapter summaries. They don't go into theology. They don't try to give a commentary. It's just an actual summary of the chapter, kind of what the Thompson would do, but it's different. In that the Thompson, these are laid out across the two columns, so it's across the reference column and the first column of the verse. See, the Thompson has that too, but it's just right under the chapter, very scrunched. So I like how they have that. Like that, easy to read. Hey, do I think this is a Bible worthy to get in? Absolutely. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. It will be enhance your study for a Bible study. Absolutely. Uh, will it last? Even though it's not edge lying for probably the rest of your life to hand down to kids. Absolutely. Um, just get it. Um, you can get it from Trinitarian Bible Society on their website. Get it from EvangelicalBible.com. Um, just encourage you to pick one up. Um, I know this review went a little longer than I thought it would. Um, but hey, we're Bible geeks. You'll probably watch it. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching. God bless.